Welcome back to the Baseball Blue Book Podcast, where we focus on the journey, not the destination. Brought to you by the Baseball Blue Book app. Are you in the book? And now, your host, Eric Wobanaw. Welcome back to the Baseball Blue Book podcast. Uh, my name is Eric Wobanaw, the president of the Baseball Blue Book. Excited to have Coach Scott Bickle with us on the program. Uh, really great story here. Brand new program, brand new head coach. A lot of great things to talk about. Uh, have a, I've had, a, had a, a chance to talk to a couple coaches uh, starting programs, and it's always a lot of fun uh, because it's just a little bit different than uh, running a program that's been uh, in place for a while. So, Coach, great to have you on. Thank you for joining us, uh, and uh, welcome to the program. Yeah, thanks for having me, Eric. It, uh, it's, a, it's a pleasure. That's that's great. Well, thank you uh, again for, for uh, you know, responding back. I'm always looking for – uh, kind of these coaches that uh, have some a unique situation, and certainly uh, a new program is a unique situation. And so we're we're really looking forward to hearing your coach uh, journey, the coaching journey, uh, kind of how you you know what you needed to do and how you got to where you are now. And then we'll spend some time talking about the program and what you're excited about, and and uh, you know the things that you know. Just like you said before we started, uh, it's busy. The life of a coach. Uh, we had a little delay here, but that's that's quite all right. I totally understand that. So why don't you go ahead and do a quick introduction, and then let's start with uh, kind of the beginning and where you grew up and, and how you got into baseball, and, and we'll start from there. Well, I don't know how much time we have for the podcast, but, uh, <laughs> you know, I've been playing, playing my whole life, three years old, uh, T-ball. We, uh, I was a all-state pitcher, um, honorable mention outfielder, uh, out of Huntington North High School back in 06 and 2005. Uh, the year before technology, I think Facebook was created around 2006. So yep. uh, I never played travel ball. I had a couple seasons of summer ball, but not necessarily travel. It wasn't uh, blown out as much yet. I uh, got a big offer to go be a big fish in a small pond to Fort Wayne, Indiana, St. Francis. Um the Cougars and um, I took it. I had a chance to walk onto a couple D1 programs, um, just decided against it and had a career there that lasted three games as a freshman. Oh. Uh, then had Tommy John on the mound, uh, sat out sophomore year, ended up uh, coming back as a designated hitter, had a couple home run career record chasers I was doing, but didn't play my senior year, went to uh, be a math teacher and special education teacher. And so it didn't work out with curriculum that I could finish up my fourth year, missed too much practice for my classes and requirements. So, um, went on a different route, you know, was never a teacher, went into business, got promoted out to Denver, found some jobs, had some careers, uh, made some, made some money. Right. And, uh, <laughs> found myself on some hard times too. And, one of those hard times, I was in a job that was uh, pretty stressful, and my old coach, Coach Roberts at St. Francis, called me. He asked me what I was doing, and uh, I kind of told him. Time was tough. You know, I'm trying to figure out how to coach, but I don't – I didn't know Denver, Colorado. I didn't know Colorado baseball. I didn't know the people. I didn't know where to start. It also cost quite a bit of money, you know, to afford housing there, to live that life. Yep. And, and he said <laughs> – he said if I ever – wanted to get back into coaching, excuse me. If you wanted me to get back into coaching, was ever in the area that he'd love to have me as a hitting coach. And I said, okay, well, timing is everything. Cause I was about the time my girlfriend and I at the time were considering going back for cheaper houses, get out of student loan debt, you know, kind of get started on our relationship in a more affordable area. So we took a risk and we went and I transferred as a furniture moving guy and did that part-time to be a coach at a program. That year, I was really blessed to be offered to go there, but it was not a great, easy season. Uh, I think we were nine and 32 or something. It was a rough season. And um, I, I left there because I wanted to get married and went to full-time employment, got offered a teaching job at uh, Snyder High School in Fort Wayne. Um, 
those coaches and principals were wanting to get me in their baseball system. So I coached a year at JV there. And the day before I was supposed to start my teaching job, I got a call from Lance Hershberger. He started Indiana Tech in 1990, um, really successful in the IA program, legend of Fort Wayne area. Um, you know, and he brought me in. And, and the rumor was I was coaching summer ball, playing in a NABF league up there. One of his volunteer assistants said, hey, you need to check this guy out. And he brought me in. He asked me why I didn't go back to St. Francis. Um, you know, my coaching style is what he wanted. And this is a guy that was a legend. And I had no relationship, hadn't played for him. And he brought me in. I guess he took me on a on the cheap, right, as a volunteer assistant. <laughs> but then uh, that was Ivy Tech Community College. And he brought me in in the second uh, season ever at Ivy Tech Community College in Fort Wayne. Um, they just completed their first season. Forty-some kids started the program. They ended with 12. They refer to them as a dirty dozen. I think they were 35 and 18 or something. Had a really good year. I don't know the exact record, but getting a chance to coach under a legend and yeah. learn from a guy. My wife and I decided, you know, I can be a teacher the rest of my life. I, my passion in life is coaching baseball. So if there was ever a chance to learn how to do this, how to win from a guy that went to five straight NAI World Series in Fort Wayne, Indiana, of all places, you know, this was my chance. Whether it paid or not, it was going to be tough. So my wife and I decided to do it. The uh, Went through some adversity at Ivy Tech uh, Community College, second year program. You know, a lot of new things there. Um Watched him build it. He's known as a program builder. So um, I was I was not his right-hand man, but I had a lot of right-hand responsibilities and worked my tail off, tried to do lessons, did camps, started volunteering in the community, boys and girls clubs, started getting involved, meeting coaches. You know, we had the COVID season the year after. We had a player die in a car wreck. We had a, a lot of adversity there. Um, last year, they announced they were shutting our program down next year, which is this year. So it's Ivy Tech's last season this year. Yeah. Um, about mid app. So I completed my master's degree at Liberty University um, last winter, about this time. Um, that was my two year plan of trying to shoot up the ladder of coaching is get a master's degree that'll put you in a place to you don't have to have a master's degree, but I thought it put me in position, you know, for applications within schools. Maybe I could do a role. Yeah. Maybe I could be a part of an athletic department, just something. I wanted to get involved and it was kind of my ticket out. So I'd been planning on leaving Ivy Tech for that was the year because I graduated. I want to put my applications out, you know, had had a couple of years under my belt, meeting coaches, going to the ABCA convention and, yep. you know, compete against great juco programs like kellogg and um you know jackson and we played wabash valley only central i mean there's some some big boys that we were being exposed to and so i applied for an athletic director position in january at, at iepuc it was something uh, back in the day lance was called he's a program builder he got a call i was i was luckily in his office when that conversation happened six seven months later one of my top five job places to start looking was IEPC because I knew that they were considering starting an athletic program. Never existed prior. No sports. You know, it's uh, tr been known as a commuter campus right. traditionally. Um, so I saw a job opening for athletic director. So I put in for it. I got my master's degree. I'm ready to go. You know, I'm going to go be a big boy now. And um I didn't get hired. I didn't get applied. They, they hired Zach McClellan, a uh, pro guy drafted for the Royals back in, I don't know, it was a little while ago. He played for Bob Morgan at IU, had a pro career. I think he was part of the Rockies in the 2007 championship season. And, you know, I tipped my cap to it and said, okay, great. <laughs> I said, well, if you're starting baseball there, you know, I put my, my hat in the ring and, yeah. I got a call. Uh, I'm at the ABCA convention of all places last year in Chicago. Uh -huh. And um, I'm in my hotel room and I see a Facebook post with uh, Kip McWilliams and Coach Vittorio out of Wilmington, you know, 
uh, Matt Tellerico's old uh, was assistant coach for Tellerico. He's a friend of our programs. And they're liking this page about IUPUC starting athletics and his face, you know, my AD's face is on there as the new head coach and AD. And I get an email from him that Saturday in Chicago after hanging out with Latroy Hawkins and top velocity people like that. And, um, Hey, you know, I'll talk to you on Monday. So I call him Monday I, and this is January. Right, yeah. I get, I, I go down there. I, I meet him. I, I see the campus. They don't have a field. They've never had athletics. They've never, um, you know, he's the athletic department, like that one guy, that new hire, he's, he might've been fresh six days as a hire as an athletic director. And we're, I'm over there touring camp. I drove two and a half hours, you know, called off work. I'm making some sacrifices. Cause I just felt like you had to put yourself in a position. Yep. Um, that desire, that passion, you know, if there's a chance, that was it. So I didn't actually formally get hired until I want to say um, March or April. Um, it was exactly one week after Ivy Tech officially announced they were shutting our program down the following season. So we went through the hurdles of there's closing our program down that we just helped build yeah. because it just wasn't, wasn't a fit for that you know, what, what they're doing at Ivy tech, but then, you know, I got hired as an assistant coach originally and, um, moved down here. We lived in a campground, um, from June 12th till October 30th, trying to find housing down here. My wife and I, we just signed up for it. We bought a camper. We're living at Sarah land. That's where they're building our field, big partners here. Um, you know, and, and really just took another risk. Well, down here, July 3rd, 4th area, he, he says, I've got to be an athletic director. I need time to do it. I think you should be the head coach. So I got named the head coach um, being down here a month um, of a new program that never existed. We didn't have a house, my wife and I and our dogs. And, <laughs> you know, we took we took the faith. You know, yeah. we took the leap of faith. Um, I don't know if I'm betting on myself or if I'm a glutton for punishment. It's one of the two. Um, I trust where I come from. Yeah. Um, I, I know I learned from a legend and, um, you know, very educated, loved the game since I was a kid. So since that started, you know, we, we introduced a softball coach, Tommy Stowers, um, cross country, got off the ground in the fall with its hurdles. You know, it was a fall sport. It started earlier. They didn't have complete teams, but uh, Tim Hoffinger is a cross country guy here that local guy and made it work completed a season so in two months of being named the head coach we brought in um you know at the time 44 people um which I, it just sounds incredible because the five years prior of coaching you might have brought in 15 20 guys right right and that was a recruiting season so in two months at the end of the recruiting cycle we brought in 44 people and you i still don't even know how we did it but you know, I'm, I'm recruiting players from Fort Wayne and our AD is doing the tours and the visits and I'm, I'm living two and a half hours away, signing kids to this program that's never existed and doesn't have a field. So to think <laughs> it's like, so impossible hasn't, you know, even registered. Yeah. We just, we know what we're trying to do and we're going after it. And that's awesome. No, you know, what's coach. The, one of the things that I'm hearing is, you're basically asking these players to to trust you like you trusted the the the, the program, right? Um, coming in and, and saying we we've got something special here. Uh, we don't really know what it's going to be like, but but we we want something special. So so to talk talk about yeah. kind of the I mean you, the adversity you've gone through, the leaps of faith. There's a lot of things that kind of correlate with baseball in general, right? And and the recruiting process and what you went through as a, as a player. Uh, and younger and the kind of the decisions that you had to make. Talk about those 44 players that you've brought in and what, what did that take? And, and, and how were you, you know, how are you focused on doing this? And, and it sounds like it was a lot of teamwork with the, the AD. Well, yeah. Um, our, yeah, our players, man, you know, we're, we we do not coach a baseball team without players, you know, that they have to get here. So yep. the old, the old movie build it and they will come. I think that rang true for quite some time. Um, you know, the recruiting and trans transfer portal timing is everything. You know, if I was going to be honest, the transfer portal is as large as it's ever been. Yeah. Um, 
COVID in the last couple of years has really hit athletics um, with eligibility, kids getting extended time frames, uh, longer time to graduate, uh, scholarship lockups. The, there was a lot of things that factored into starting baseball this year. So these kids um, really, yeah, they took a leap of faith with us. Um, they had to visit us. They had to talk to us. They, we had to be as transparent and honest yep. as humanly possible yep. because we want them to know the truth. And there was no sales pitch to get anybody here. Um, I, I watched recruiting podcasts and hear people talk and what they do and how they do it. And there's great processes to recruiting. But um, for us, what has worked is being honest. And, you know, we're a brand new program. We're not able to compete in national championships this year. Um, we don't have a field yet. It's being built um, right now. You know, that got approved two months in. That, but they didn't know that at the time. Right. And they're taking our word of mouth. So um, we had to show them kind of our vision of what we were trying to do. We also have some neighboring conference schools that you can use in comparison. So IU Kokomo's near. It's an hour and a half. Um, IU South Bend's way up north, but, you know, IU Southeast is an hour south, and they're a nationally ranked NAI program. Coach Real um, has, has, you know, called, and we've had a lot of conversations. Um, Brantley over at Kokomo, you know, he's a local, he's, he's in the club sport. So we looked in the region, and we can compare. You can kind of see what yeah. – what's going to happen. Um, both of those programs have had success, Southeastern and South Central Indiana, Southwestern even, tons of talent down here. Um, a lot of their options where we're located, it's Division Three, you know, high academic, uh, yep. you know, fairly expensive. I, I mean, it's fairly expensive options. So, and not a lot of junior college down here. The closest junior college program, I think, is Vincennes. It might be Ancilla. There's two junior colleges in the state of Indiana after the season. So there's not a lot of junior college options. You almost have to go to Illinois or Ohio or Michigan. Or a lot of these kids are considering, because of the talent level, going to D3 programs. And that's a major commitment. So yep. um, we're, a, we're, a new, we're new to a lot of things. I mean, we're new to the school, never had athletics. We're we're new to the people and the business of Columbus. It's It's got a lot of good business opportunities down here. Um, IU has a great academic institution, great business school, great health uh, ag advocacies. And, um, you know, nobody knows who we are because they've never had sports. Yeah. And, yeah. Yep. I, you know, so I, would I have ever heard of IUPUC if they hadn't reached out to, to Lance Hirschberger a year and a half ago? Probably not. I, and I've lived in Indiana my whole life. So I believe their mission of adding sports is connecting our town's incredible. Our people are awesome. It's a great area, low crime. Um, how would you've never heard of this place? Well, I don't know another college without sports. So <laughs> I think they're wanting to get their name out. Yeah. Uh, you know, and <clears throat> so these kids coming in, it's a chance for them to play out the game. Yep. I know a lot of schools are backed up due to COVID. Yep. Um, junior college baseball is backed up to an extent right now, too. Kids looking for that bigger, better offer. Um, but the market of student athletes, if it was a business model, the demand isn't very high because everybody has a pretty full roster um, of existing teams. So our biggest firepower in recruiting was our kids get a chance to be on the field I mean, what better chance do you have than a brand new program? Absolutely. Absolutely. You're only competing with the new people you're bringing in versus uh, people that have had roster spots. Absolutely. We, we don't have return. We, we don't have returners. Yep. We don't have seniors. Um, yep. We did get some transfer kids, but um, kids looking for opportunities. We have some kids at some great programs that were just, you know, second in line or third in line. And, yep. you know, they want a chance to go start and play and be the guy. Well, that was our firepower. That and and the our, our tuition our tuition rates really affordable. I was going to say the hat. I was going to say the logo. You, you, the colors are good. The hat, the hat's pretty cool. Thanks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. If you think about all that's been accomplished, it's December right now. Um, our guys had our first fall, you know, in September, um, but we had to figure out where do the kids live. How do we set up advisors? Who are these people? Right. You know, it's my first time being on campus too, so. 
We got to meet our admissions team, our advisors, you know, who are the players to make things happen? Where do we get answers from? And then every kid comes with a unique story. So, um, you know, with academic requirements, with uh, maybe a behavior thing or, right. um, and so it opens up. It's things not many people really talk about in the college world. Um, well, no coach, you know, we, one of the things we, that I love hearing this is, is, you know, being a head coach is, is hard anyway, right? I mean, it, it is a full time, you know, you're running a, I always say it's the CEO, right? You're the CEO, you've got board of directors, you've got customers, you've got all these people that you've got to do. But when you start a new program, it's like starting a new business. It's not like coming in and saying, okay, I've got my team or even replacing the team. Um, you, you've got to really start over. Talk, talk you, you had mentioned one thing that I really appreciated what you said was working and understanding the region, right? There's, there's, you had to use some comparisons, right? You had to look at it and go, what, am, what are we going to be selling? Because we don't necessarily have any history. So we've got to figure out some comparatives. Um, That's right. how, how were the other coaches? Cause obviously coaching is, I always call it the fraternity, right? There's a fraternity of, of baseball coaches. Um, everybody's competing, but they're also, uh, there's a level of, of respect and, and a commitment to the sport. Talk about how you, you worked with uh, the local coaches and the guys that you're ultimately competing with, but they're also helping you build this program. So, so it's, it's that, that community of baseball is what's been really special. I'll be honest. Um, it, you know, I, um, uh, the, the, talking with a baseball coach, so I could probably go off on a tangent, but we know who won the Super Bowl last year, right? It was, uh, uh, the Rams, Sean McVay is the head coach, correct? Yep. Um, who's his assistant coach? I don't know. Coach. I don't know. <laughs> exactly. So <laughs> it, it, that, it's my point. So for six years, you know, I've been uh, under the helm of the guy everybody knows. Well, nobody knows who I am. So um, it helps to have community. A blessing of being a head coach is like, yeah, Coach Real was nationally ranked, uh, been successful in our conference uh, for a long time. He's reached out, uh, shared some of his experience. Head coaches talk to head coaches. Yeah. And uh, Coach Gould at Taylor has extended a hand. Rich, uh, Coach Benjamin at Indiana Wesleyan, um, Franklin's head coach and their regional competitor. Um, I've talked with a lot of coaches. As a head coach, you get to talk with these people and really build relationships and ask questions. It also helped that I was in the Crossroads Conference, played in it and coached a year in it. So, you know, Coach Roth up at Grace and uh, Kip McWilliams at Indiana Tech, all the, all the regional coaches, you know, really that I've tried to build relationships with through different reasons for junior college baseball. Um, they, I don't know, they, it, you get to have those conversations now that you're the head coach. I don't think anybody knows who I was prior yeah. and I don't, I think that's just how it is. And so our AD being a connected pro guy, yep. you know, owned travel organization locally, he's got a ton of a, a Rolodex of, of people in his life. He's a hall of famer at IU, you know, we're an IU school. So um, uh, unbelievable amount of resources um, for our community. That's awesome. And so coaches have reached out uh, regionally. They're, they're fairly familiar, but, um, you know, nobody knows what to expect. Nobody knows who we are. It's all new. And yeah, like you said before, our 44 guys, you know, uh, it's not 44 anymore. I think that's normal in college, but, right. um, you know, those guys are signing up for wish in one hand and see what fills up in the other. <laughs> and, you know, we're, we're trying to make it right. So we're, we got our hats, we got our socks, we got our games. We played false scrimmages. We played a team out of St. Louis. Um, there was also a new program, um, played at only central. We got junior college connections. We're firing on a, a lot of cylinders for a brand new program. That's great. We don't have the budget We're our field got approved. It's getting billed two months in. Um, we're talking advertisement and live streaming and how do we hire new coaches and how do we pay them? And, um, That's awesome. it, it really, it really is a full, you know, we don't have returning players and we don't have the seniors and I'll be honest, I'm the most college experienced coach in our athletic program yeah. and I'm a brand new head coach. So, um, our team and our people is really what's, is really why this is even possible. We have great partners locally. We have great coaches around us. That's great. 
we've maintained positive relationships with even our enemies, right? Our conference enemies. But I think that only happens with the integrity of, uh, you know, being honest and, and really just trying to be good hearted. And there's no missold message, yeah. you know, keeping it clean, keeping it honest yep. um, and being fair expectations. Hey man, I'm a competitor. I hate losing more than I like winning just like every other coach in the world. It's also unrealistic for me to think we're going undefeated this year. Right. So um, that that's what's been really challenging is you want the world and you can't have it. Yeah. And time and patience is not my strength, <laughs> um, you know, but that uh, we're doing it, man. That's uh, great people. That's great. That's um, great. Team, a team like atmosphere. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't wish it upon everybody. Yeah, I, I also don't think it's for everybody. Um, I think it's the opportunity I got. That's awesome. Um, Coach, you know, after the dust settles, right, you've got a lot of, you, you've got a lot of, uh, you know, opportunity. And the way I look at it, the adversity brings the opportunity. New program is exciting. It's something that's shiny. You know, that can obviously appeal to, to a, a, a number of different types of people, right? After right. that settles and everything kind of goes, and now you're no longer the new program on the block, right? You're not the new kid in the school, what what's going to yeah. differentiate you? What 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 makes Coach Bickle and IUPUC u- unique, and why kids are going to want to come there and at least take a look at the program? Well, you're absolutely right. So this year it's shiny diamond, right? We're the new team. Everybody, it's exciting. What happens next year? You know, we're a conference team. It's kind of shiny again because it's our first conference season for real. Um, moving forward. Um, that's where it gets tough. You, you, you don't want to be a loser for three, five years, right? You've got to start progressing and you've got to start showing some results. So the differentiator, and that's hard for us in the three to five year picture, you know, that crystal ball, because we've got two really great comparable schools in our conference that are our sister schools. Yeah. You know, we have IU Kokomo, we have IU Southeast, but our conference in river States getting into that is huge. It's a, Really good conference over here for any eyeball. Um, what differentiates us and our program from theirs? Um, you know, we have something to prove. Um, we haven't earned anything. And, you know, we have a coaching staff that cares. Uh, I think every I think every college, pro, most programs have coaches that care. Yeah. I think our style is, uh, is learned from a, a big baseball guy. It's really hard to tell. I... I've actually had to send some recruits to some of our competitors because I, I want them to evaluate that answer for themselves. And I, I, I couldn't tell you if either of our schools is a better fit for any of them. I know if you want to compete for championships, there's really only one option right now. I'm looking to change that. Um, You want to go be close to that. There's, there's another option. Columbus, Indiana is unique to those two other towns and other towns around us. We're 8,000 a year in state tuition. It's hard to beat um, academic. You got a coach that cares, a uh, new field, a motivated athletic department, a pro guy AD. You've got a beautiful town to do it in, and there's opportunity to compete for a position. I don't I don't know the actual no, like the I don't want to go there. The no of not coming here is not trusting that it will be okay. Yeah. I like the insecurities of it's a new program is probably what prevents some guys from giving us a shot. Uh, Long term, though, if we're competing in the conference, if we continue to grow and and we run this the right way, and this is our mission to our kids that are here because they get to establish that culture. Uh, if we do it the right way and play the game the right way with integrity and respect and and we go compete really hard and we just get better every day, the differentiators from within and I want guys that want to be here and I want them to not be here if they don't want to be here. And there's nothing evil about that. I, I care about the kid, whether they play for me or not. And I don't know if that differentiates us. I, uh, I know the guys that give us a chance, we're going to make it worth their while. Yep. And um, my goal has nothing to do with winning baseball games. I know that might be weird to hear too, but, I, we have no goal of winning national championships here right now. Um, not because we couldn't, because we might not even be able to, but because I really believe that I want our kids to graduate on time. I want to teach them 
what I learned from Lance Hirschberger, his program and the mentored coaches I've asked, if I can challenge them on a baseball field, if I can get them graduated and, and down the road, they're proud of this experience. Yep. We did our job. Yep. And, and that has nothing to do with, with winning championships. Although as a competitor, I hate losing more than I like winning. Uh, at the same time though, you know, we had a draft last year on our Ivy tech team and I don't care if he pitches for the Cubs this year or not. I love the kid. And 10 years from now when he's not playing, I hope I still have that relationship with him. And um, that stuff does matter more than, you know, the, the national championship exposure. So we spent a lot of time on development and culture and connecting with the community and trying to grow up as men together. And that's, that's what baseball gets to teach us every day, how to handle failure, uh, how to overcome the adversity, how to how to seek new opportunities. It's no different than what I guess we're experiencing right now. And um, so I'm sorry that was a long answer, but I would tell you um, I, I'm OK with guys not going to my program and I'm OK with the failure that comes with recruiting because I know the guys that are here are the ones that want to be here. And as long as that's the case, I, I, I can be happy going to war with those guys. Um, the ones that uh, think the grass is always greener, you know, I just hope that they, I hope they learn through that experience that, you know, whatever the outcome, I, I've had to, I've had to live through that a lot of most of my life, you know, grass is always greener, brand new program. You're a head coach. And it's like, yeah, <laughs> but they didn't tell you, you know, all the stuff that came with it, right. you know, that job pays more money, but they didn't tell you it came with less weekends and more headaches. And so the grass isn't always greener, but we believe we're going to make the most out of where our feet are right now. And um, so far, so good. I, I'm it really, you'd be impressed if you knew how much has been accomplished in the short amount of time um, that we've existed um, with the resources that we have and the new people that we have. And I think we just have a really good group of athletic department that just are hungry to prove the doubters wrong and are ready for, you know, not waiting three years. We're all kind of impatient. We want to get out there and play and be successful right, and right. see what starting a program, uh, you know, the biggest initiative for starting athletics is student culture on campus and, trying to get our name out there. So having an impact on enrollment and student campus culture and how a community views this school, because it was a community, a commuter, a commuter type school, right. um, but exposing what our school is to other people through athletics has been, it's really an adapt adaptation that our entire institution at IEPUC will have to grow with so meeting these new people this pocket there's only 980 something kids going to our school it's a small school uh, not many people know about it but the second we can get on a field there's a sports section in the newspaper right yep. so we can get our name out there if we represent that the right way we really feel like we're changing more than just baseball or kids and we're changing a culture and a community here that didn't have athletics prior you know it's it's it, uh, it's neat that you brought that up because uh, in your in your scenario in your case and it, it's the same case across the board but it's i think it's it's a lot more uh, visible in 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 what you're going through is it's a marketing arm for the school right uh, uh, athletics is a way of attracting kids that would not necessarily uh, go to that type of school if you didn't have the athletics and i think you bring up a really good point you are you're representing the school through the baseball program more than anything. And, and I think that's really important because you talked about culture. You talked about how you're going to be creating what you're basically presenting to the communities. Um, with that, you've said a lot of things of what you want this to be. What is, you know, at the end of the day, if someone was watching this and they, they tuned in at minute 33 and they, and, and they were like, we want to know what coach Bickle is really like, what, what would define you and what do you want to make sure that in five, ten years, that's what that that that's what everybody's going to recognize this program as? I that's a complicated answer. Yes, yes. I, would tell, I would tell them to hang on tight. Um, <laughs> I, I I've challenged people to try and define me. I think I'm really unique. Um, I I would tell you that when I was coaching with Lance Hershberger and. 
he complimented me one time and this is a story and he might refute that this is the truth but this is just my perception <laughs> he complimented me once and you didn't get a lot in the old school environment i mean he definitely taught and learned a lot but um he i remember the day he looked over and he said that i was the biggest hearted coach that he ever met in college baseball and that's a 35 year you know historic historical juggernaut so for him to look over and say you wouldn't care if i was a coach or not you do you like you'd still care for me even if i wasn't a coach and i said yeah i don't why was why was that even in question and he said that i was the biggest hearted coach he ever met in college baseball so getting a comment like that um man if you learn that about me um whatever it was it probably was mutual and i care i i would say a big heart and i care a ton and uh to a fault you know i I sign up for some sacrifice and uh, do some stupid uh, personal things, but I don't do a lot of things for personal gain. I, I, I do a lot for um, the people around us. And if, if you, if you had one thing to say about me and it was, Hey, I was the biggest hearted guy and I cared a lot. I'd be, hey, man, I'd be pretty happy I, with that. I, I I'm pretty, I, yeah, I'm not going to hang my cleats up on it, but that's, that's the inspiration. Yeah. If I'm being honest, if, the second I'm a liar or doing this for an ego or doing it for money or fame or whatever the case is, I can tell you I went down the wrong path yep. because yep. that's not what fits me the best. Yep. And so hopefully they see that I'm a man of character and, and I actually really, truly care. Where did that come from, Coach? I mean, do, do, does that go all the way back to family kind of roots or is that something you picked up with the you know youth coaches or what, what do you what do you attribute that to? Uh, yeah, see, that's a, you could extend this podcast. Wife? To the... Is it wife? I mean, I, I always ask, I, you know what I thought, think I should do. I need to bring in wives of the coaches and actually get what these, what you guys are actually like. <laughs> yeah. Well, she, she gets, she gets the raw version, you know, she's, uh, oh my, well, yeah, I, none of this would have been possible without my wife. I can tell you that, um, her being in my corner and supporting our decisions, even though, you know, they might be it's on a limb, right? You don't really know the answer. College athletics, yeah. you know, I could be fired tomorrow. Yep. Um, and that's college. I mean, it's, that's, that's a profession. That's any job really, but in our world where you're out in the cameras and stuff. So what I've, what I, what I would explain on that is I wouldn't care if I got fired tomorrow. I don't want to be fired tomorrow, but um, you know, I always go home to a great wife and my, I have a God. So my hierarchy has always been God, wife, and then baseball and, I said, because I can get fired in baseball tomorrow. I still go home to a great wife. Right. And if she if she wasn't with us, I don't know what I would do. But thank God I have a God because I don't know where I'd be without him. And so and I don't know if I'm supposed to advertise all that. But that's all I, good. That's all good. From. That's all good. That's what we want to hear. We want to hear the heart of the coach. And I think that's that's important. And and you, you said it from the beginning. It's honesty. Um, it's transparency. And and. Uh, it's that, that, that big heart and that's, it, it comes through. So I, I appreciate you being open and just kind of raw. That's what I want these to be. And I think people really enjoy that. Uh, actually, we're on a, on every Tuesday night, we have a question and answer for parents and players that we talk about the recruiting process. And I, I always talk about my podcast because I tell them, I said, if you really want to understand the coaches, get on and listen to my podcast. Cause I, that's what I do. I, I, I don't really care about, you know, your, your techniques of, of, you know, fielding or, or your pitching. I, right. I, I don't, that's that you got, you get enough of that. There's enough of people out there that understand that better than I do. I, I like the personal side and why, why somebody needs to put their faith and their trust. Cause that's what you're doing. You're putting your kid, you're making the decision to go in there and have four years or two years or whatever it is with a coach. That is, it's a, it's not a four year commitment. It's a 40 year commitment. It's, it's, it's your life. It's going to really determine and, and, um, really kind of, you know, mold who you're going to be. And, and you got to have somebody that you can, you can really trust. So I appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely. I, uh, yeah, man, I, 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 you also, another thing I would tell, um, people that, you know, I talk with my kids on a pretty, uh, personal level, you know, we can open up because of our transparency. Um, but I, you know, in, in reflection, I would tell you most people, big hearted and caring people are that way because they know what the opposite feels like yeah. and they don't wish that for other people. And, um, I would tell you the root comes from there. I mean, I think just the hard, 
and I've had a good family and stuff, but uh, you know, the times that you go through, yeah. I guess in my personality, I realized I could have money, uh, but that doesn't mean happiness. And I could have uh, a beautiful girlfriend, but that didn't mean we got along and I could try and do this on my own. But every time I try and do it on my own, I fail inevitably. So why am I failing? You know, guy with education, multi-sport athlete, a big hearted person. Why do I keep banging my head on the wall on this thing called life? And um, that, well, because you can't do it alone. And sometimes you need to ask for help. And, you know, I believe uh, our Lord gives us what we're able to handle and our plates are full. And oftentimes mine are over, I have three plates and they're all over spewing. <laughs> and anytime I can come to that realization, it, it really dates back to in Denver, Colorado, the church where I met my wife, where I got baptized was, um, you know, I, the realization that I can't do this on my own and I need other people. And, um, I, and truthfully, you want other people um, are in your life and you want them to be successful. So um, making sure that I, you know, removing the I, whatever I want in the situation, if you take that out uh, and fear and anxiety and you take that out of the of, you know, your palette of thoughts and stuff. Well, what does that look like? Well, minus fear and anxiety and selfishness, man, what a beautiful world, you know? Um, You know, I start looking to compliment people. I uh, just start helping people and making an impact. And I I do a lot of things for free. And I I will say that out loud because when you drive a truck, your friends call you to move (laughs) because you have a truck and like, yep. But, but I'm that way as a person, I think people know I care and that I would, you know, if I, if I had a buddy call me in, in California right now, he called this morning, a matter of fact, and he said, hey, man, my tire popped. I don't know what to do. I'm the kind of guy that would figure out a way yeah. to call and help that guy in California. I don't know why. Um, but I also, I know the opposite too. When you have no one to turn to and you, you feel like you're alone and you don't have the answers and I don't like those feelings yep. and I don't want other people to feel that way. I want them to know that I got their back and I'm willing to sacrifice my own money, my own time, my own energy, my own feelings to help. Okay. And I don't, I don't see what's wrong with that. Coach, there's nothing wrong with that. That's awesome. I'll tell you what, to, to kind of wrap this up, um, big hearted coach Bickle, um, willing to do anything for anyone. And I think that's a, that that's, that's uh that's some traits and character traits that I would want my son to learn under. And I think that's pretty awesome. I think that's a great place to kind of wrap this up. Um, but coach, yeah, it has been a, it's been a privilege. I, I really, really enjoy talking to you and, and what your, your heart came out through the entire interview. Um, yeah, it's building a program. There's a ton of stuff that you've got to do. There's, you, you, can, you probably step back and go, I, I don't know how it even happened. I think that's probably where you're at right now. Um, but I think th- this is exciting. I'm looking forward to watching the program, watching you grow, watch the, the, the team uh, compete, and uh, hopefully we'll catch up with each other at uh, the ABCA this year. You, you, you attending? You going? Yeah, Nashville. There you go. It's, 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 there you go. It's uh, I move close to Nashville. It's close. Uh, thanks for having yeah. me. I uh, it's a pleasure, pleasure to talk baseball and real. I would say real talk with you today. Um, um, and I, you know, I appreciate you switching hats for us too. <laughs> hey, you know what? I think uh, you may uh, we may run into each other in Nashville. And uh, if you got one of those extra hats, I'd love to wear one of those on my podcast. <laughs> Those are Sounds those good. are pretty these awesome. Are, these are, these are, yeah, I'm loving it. Thanks, I appreciate it a lot. Thank you very much. Thanks. Take care.